So today on Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV, we're out on the road in a Cummins R2.8 turbo diesel 80 series Land Cruiser restoration, but also a really cool truck with great features. So stay tuned. <laughs> This top stretched 10 inches and it's going on a really cool project that we'll go look at ho hopefully here in just a second. Luckily, the top fiberglass tops are available new uh, thanks to the guys at Classic Cruisers uh, because when we splice our tops here, we'll use two, uh, one new one for the front and one new one for the back, right? And so we only have to worry about one splice. Um, I guess we could come up with a mold and make these. But we do, you know, one a year, uh, so it doesn't really make sense. And they're almost always different lengths, right? We've stretched cruisers four inches, six inches, eight inches, 14 inches. So um, it's easier to just custom make a top uh, for each one of them since it's such low volume. But uh, 10 inch stretch is a really cool length. So this vehicle was a stage three restoration that has actually come back to profits for a powertrain change. His original powertrain that was in the vehicle before the stage three restoration was an old school Chevy 350, and he requested we reuse that powertrain. After receiving his vehicle, using it for a few days, he realized it was short of the power expectations that he was looking for and sent it back for this high horsepower LS3 backed up with a 6L80 six-speed transmission and a twin stick modification to the Toyota split case. Now we have a little hot rod on her hands in a custom paint color and she goes down the road effortlessly. More than enough power to pass, just a ton of fun. I think he's gonna love it. So I'm excited to show you this new part that is gonna be for sale in the PRLC Solutions section of our parts corner on the website. So this is a 3D printed replica fuse box door or fuse box cover for a 60 series Land Cruiser. These things are always broken or at least often broken. And this new cover, 3D printed cover, fills that space. Now they're black, so if you have 60 series that's gray or brown, you're probably gonna need to get some plastic paint and paint those to match your dash, but better than a broken one. Available on the site for sale. So this Land Cruiser is actually very familiar to me because it was my daily driver for a couple of years. Um, it was an 80 series uh, conversion done by another shop and they, they kind of, they didn't kind of mess it up. They really messed it up. And the, and the owner sent it to us to, uh, to redo. And then uh, before he could drive it, um, I bought it from him and drove it for a couple of years and it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't restored. Um, then when I sold it, the new owner did what I wish I would have done to it and don't have the time to, and that's gave it a really nice uh, external stage two restoration and a new interior and some other upgraded features, which you'll see. But uh, I feel like I'm at home again, back in my daily driver for two years and I miss it and now I kinda kind of want it back actually but it'll have a new home so I'm happy for him sad for me happy for him if it was this pretty when I owned it I probably wouldn't have been able to sell it this is our stage 2 restoration on an 80 series so that's a doors off hatch and tailgate off glass out restoration where virtually every sprayable surface is redone in this case we did not refinish the engine compartment just because we didn't have the engine out and on an 80 series it's a pretty big job to do that just to make the engine compartment nice and shiny but we didn't change the color so it still looks good when you open the hood even before i got this land cruiser it had a lot of the off-road accessories that you see that are still on it the rear bumper and rock sliders as well as the arb front bumper are the same ones that have been on there for years but we did remove them all and we re-powder coated everything so they look brand new again 
Then we changed the roof rack because this Easy on K9 that we chose is just a really good looking roof rack. Uh, lots of attachment points, right? 10 attachment points. So it'll take a lot of weight up there if the owner wants to add a rooftop tent. Then on the roof rack, we've mounted a total of eight S2 Baja Designs lights, left, right, and rear facing, which are fantastic to use at night. And while we were at it, we put some Baja Designs LP6 lights on the front. And I can tell you from driving home the other night, they are awesome. This Land Cruiser already had the old Nynemu two and a half inch lift, and we retained that, but we went back to a set of factory wheels that we've powder coated that same color that I told you about in the last episode with the 80 series, anybody remember? Enchanted Evening, that's right. Pretty good color for the factory 80 series wheels if you wanna make them look brand new, and so we went back with those. The interior of this Land Cruiser is mostly new. The headliner is the one that it had in it, but we couldn't keep the rest. It was pretty ratty and in bad shape, so it has brand new carpet and of course all new leather on the seats. And we also went with a Delta Vehicle System center console. The reason for that was the old center console was in pretty bad shape, but also we wanted a cool place to mount the Switch Pro that we're using to control all of those off-road lights. And also it solved the problem with where to put the Murphy gauge for the Cummins. I've never liked this color of 80 because the dark green, or really, I've really never liked any dark colored vehicle because dark colors just look so crummy when they're dirty, but this is absolutely a beautiful dark green. And as long as it's clean, it really sticks out and looks great. So the seat belts in this rig are the original ones and they're kind of khaki, really. Um, they weren't available until very, very recently and this would already have the new ones there on order, but. They won't be here for a couple of weeks, but the company we use for all of our seat belts, Seat Belt Planet, actually just came out with 80 series replica seat belts for all three rows if you need them in all colors, even more colors than were available in the 80 series. So thank you to them for providing that solution because it was really hard on previous 80 series restorations to do anything with the seat belts, and now we don't have that problem. Seat Belt Planet. So the Cummins in this restoration isn't a new installation. We actually finished it up probably close to four years ago now. And it's got a 6L80E automatic behind it, the GM six speed, which we don't use anymore uh, just because the eight speed is better. If six is good, eight is better, right? Maybe the eight speed will be gone in favor of a 10 speed in a few years, I don't know. But the six speed still does really well. I mean, as long as you've got more gears than just a standard three speed with an overdrive auto like a 6L80, you're still be in really good shape with the Cummins R2.8. I actually can put a lot of miles on this rig. I'm thinking, close to 10,000 uh, in the two years I had it, driving back and forth from the shop to work. So all in all, this conversion is well proven and ready to keep on going for the new owner. You know, we love these cars. In fact, we love all vehicles. And so every once in a while, we see something that just shouldn't have been done. And that's why we like to say, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> So there's a handful of stoppets on this vehicle. Um, so it's a resto mod. So that kind of opens up uh, the freedom to do some things that you wouldn't do on something that's more Toyota. I mentioned just a little bit ago that you know custom seats don't really fit that much in a Toyota DNA truck. These are custom seats. Um, but because this is a resto mod built by somebody else, I don't know, 10 years ago, um, you know, it makes sense. I mean, we would, if we were doing a Ramjet 350 like this has, we probably would have done custom seats back then. Um, but we would have mounted them better than this. So one stop it is seat mounts. We already had a seat mount stop it a long time ago, but when you're custom mounting seats, you just want to avoid making them homemade looking, right? And right there, I see a splice and a piece of tubing. And that's actually a pretty nice weld, but but butt splicing anything in fabrication is kind of a no-no. And then the the foot plate on the floor with just one bolt is strange, and it's at a strange angle too. Like why not have that either perpendicular to the center body line or parallel to it instead of at just some random angle? And all of that kind of thing, and it's over here too, there's all kinds of problems. All that kind of thing leads up to just sort of homemade looking stuff, right? So if you're gonna make something 
you know, how I say it to the guys is it has to look like a computer designed it and a robot built it. And that's hyperbole, uh, but it sets the tone, right, for fabrication. So if this thing kind of looks like a plumber designed it and a plumber built it, and so, you know, that's a stop it, right? Um, think about, if you can, your fabrication looking like something that you couldn't do or you couldn't have done. That's what impresses people, and that's what makes vehicles impressive. It's like, how'd they do that? How'd they do that? There's no guessing about how they did that. They bent a piece of tubing, or they found a bend somewhere, and then they cut it, and they spliced it on there, and then they ground out a tab, and they welded it on the bottom, and all of that is very amateur looking in fabrication. And this wasn't an amateur built truck, this was built in the shop by people who probably charged this guy a lot of money. So, it, you know, it's out of place. And there's another stop it right here. This is a smaller stop it, and custom switches are cool, right? Um, but lots of custom switches, and that's, this thing's getting rewired, that's why it's here, this car, but, you know, these, all of these switches went in all of these holes in the dash, and then they just made the whole thing very unbalanced looking because the three cables that control old school vintage AC was up here, then there's just like this big open empty void, and a million switches down here, most of them don't even do anything. The design of it is just wrong, right? And so are the black uh, switch bezel and ash, or well, I'm sure the ashtray was black, but the glove box door and the bezel for the gauge is being black. I guess that's just a design thing. I can't say stop it. You might like that stuff black, but we're not gonna do it black. Saw something else I didn't like. <laughs> okay. Um, you see it all the time. Guys will get their vehicle, they'll get their new vehicle at home, and they'll be like, I wanna make it mine. And so what do they do? Well, they start unbolting things and painting them black in lots of cases. So you could take something that's really professionally done. Uh, this is actually a super nice paint job on this Land Cruiser. Um, and when I say that, I mean the quality of the paint job is nice. Um, but then they painted all the hinges black, the latches black. Um, well, there's tons of black accents on it. And what that, to me, makes it look like is that, you know, an amateur, a kid got it, right? A 15-year-old kid, and he took it home, and he's like, I'm gonna paint all that stuff, but, you know, it's kind of like the fuzzy dice in the window, but with a can of black spray paint. Stop it! Stop it! Ah!